Let's cover the last two kinematic equations that we'll need when we're studying the linear motion of objects, and see how we can apply them to both horizontal and vertical motion. Just as a quick reminder, here are the kinematic equations for position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration that we learned in the last video. These equations are what we might call the definitions of position, velocity, and acceleration. The next equations that we'll learn are really useful, and they combine all three of these. So this first equation includes the variables for time, position, velocity, and acceleration. And for an object that's accelerating, this equation helps us find the object's position at any point in time by using the initial position, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and how long it's been accelerating for. Let's take a closer look. So in this equation, xf stands for final position, xi is the initial position, vi is the initial velocity, t is the time, and a is acceleration. For equations that only have a t by itself, the t really means delta t, or change in time. Or we could also think of it this way. We assume the initial time is just zero, and t is equal to the final time, which is the time point that we care about, the time point we're plugging in to find the object's position. And here are the SI units that we use for this equation. Time is in seconds, position is in meters, velocity is meters per second, and acceleration is meters per second squared. All right, now the last kinematic equation that we'll learn for linear motion is this one. This equation relates the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object. But it doesn't include the variable for time, which is pretty interesting, because time is a fundamental part of kinematics. This equation is actually made by combining and rearranging a few other equations in order to get rid of the variable for time, which makes it really useful for certain problems where we don't know anything about time. So for an object that is accelerating, like this car, this equation will help us find the final velocity of the object based on its initial velocity, its acceleration, and its change in position. This looks very similar to the equation we learned for acceleration if we had rearranged the variables like we mentioned in the last video. So with the equation on the left, we're using the change in time, and with this new equation on the right, we're using the change in position. The left equation, can tell us the car's velocity based on how much time the car has been accelerating for. And the right equation can tell us the car's velocity based on how much distance the car has been accelerating over. So let's take a closer look at the variables in this new equation. Vf stands for final velocity. Vi is initial velocity. A is acceleration. Xf is final position and xi is initial position. And here are the SI units for the variables in this equation. So now we have a nice list of kinematic equations that we can use to solve problems, which we'll work through more in later videos. And don't worry if this seems like a lot here, you don't have to memorize it. All of these are on your equation sheet, and the variables are defined there, so you'll know what they mean. Now, before we wrap up with kinematic equations, there's one more thing we need to cover, and that's the variables that we use for horizontal and vertical motion. So we're learning about linear motion, or motion along a straight line, and mostly we've talked about a car driving along a road, which would be horizontal motion. But we can also have vertical motion, like if we dropped a ball from some height and let it fall down, the car and the ball are both examples of linear motion, but they're in different directions. In physics, we typically use x to represent horizontal motion, and we use y to represent vertical motion. So just like we've been using x to represent horizontal position, we're going to use y to represent vertical position, or the height of an object. And sometimes we'll use x and y as subscripts, to label the direction of something. We can use v with x as a subscript to mean velocity in the horizontal direction, or v with y as a subscript to mean velocity in the vertical direction. Likewise, ax would mean horizontal acceleration, 
and ay would mean vertical acceleration. The takeaway here is that when they're the actual variables, x and y mean horizontal and vertical position. But when they're subscripts next to a variable, x and y are telling us the direction of that variable, like velocity or acceleration. So what does this mean for our list of kinematic equations that we've put together? Well, it means we actually know twice as many equations as before without even learning them. Every equation can be applied to either horizontal or vertical motion just by using x or y. Here's our equation for average velocity that uses x. And again, if we use y instead of x, we have an equation for vertical average velocity. Notice how we've added x and y as subscripts for the average velocity variables to label them as average velocity in the horizontal or vertical direction. And we can do the same thing for our equation for acceleration. Here, all the variables for velocity and acceleration get their own subscript, x or y, to label the direction. However, the variable t for time does not get an x or a y subscript, because time applies to all motion. Time can't be horizontal or vertical. And finally, here are the last two kinematic equations that we learned. And again, each one has a version for horizontal or vertical motion, just by using either x or y. Different physics equations are going to show up in this course, in your class, in other online videos, maybe on a website where you do your homework, and all of those equations might look just slightly different from each other. They might have different subscripts, or they might just be rearranged, and it can definitely be annoying, especially when you're learning these for the first time. All you need to know is what each variable means and what each subscript means. That way, you'll understand how to use any equation, even one that you haven't seen before. So for the kinematic equations, here are the variables that we'll use. And for the subscripts, i means initial, or instead you might see a zero, which means time zero, and it's also sometimes called not. f means final, and if there's no subscript, it might also mean final. You would see variables with the subscripts i and f in an equation, or instead, you would see variables with a subscript 0, and then one with no subscript. These are sort of paired together. Then x as a subscript means the horizontal direction, and y as a subscript means the vertical direction. And last, it's not a variable or a subscript, but remember that this little triangle is delta, and it means the final value minus the initial value, or the change in that value.